turn your radio up and listen. It's time for City Life. Here's Rob McGowan. Yeah, yeah, it's been busy. You guys busy down there? Yeah, it's been good, Rob. It's been good. The summer's been good so far. So, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's no good. complaints. So, that's yeah. good. And you're getting yeah. uh, stock in and stuff now from... Uh, Starting to get some. It's going to be a challenge for the next couple months, but we're not where we usually were, but we will be. You know, it's fine. You know, you just got to roll with the dice. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. It'll happen yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm here with uh, Jason Harris today, one of our city councilors, and we're going to uh, talk a little politics, I guess, <laughs> see what's going on new in your world. So what do you think of the new council and everybody there? Give us uh, some real yeah. dirt. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> no there's, you know what? I think we have a great council. We have uh, obviously, you know, four council, four, four of them were successful in their rerun and uh, four new councilors. And uh, we have a good mix, uh, a great variety of people, a great variety of ideas, and uh, really eight that really want to work together and, and make sure we make the right decisions. And, and uh, you know, I'll make sure the community knows what's going on. Uh, communication has, has become the key word, I guess, around the table. And uh, uh, it's, it's a big change from when I was there like uh, 11 years ago, or 13 years ago, sorry. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good council. Very happy to be with this uh, group of uh uh, ladies and, 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 and guys for sure. Oh, that's awesome. So is there any, uh, one thing that you guys are particularly work on that you're excited about in, in the new council? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, there's, <laughs> there's some exciting, exciting things coming, coming down the pipe, I guess. I mean, you know, the multiplex is still being talked about, uh, you know, we have to work with our, uh, other levels of government. We got to get, make sure the Centennial bridge is, is done over the next few years for a safety issue. We have to make sure our King George highway, it's a designated highway, of course, of the province. So we, you know, we're, we're working with them to make sure we get some extra lanes, uh, passing lanes on King George highway. It's traffic is up in Miramichi. There's people coming to Miramichi, uh, people moving to Miramichi. So, you know, you have to get around the river and, uh, uh, so there's lots of exciting things, and uh, I think one thing with this council, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna stand pat and, and wait for a, a handout. Uh, we're gonna be you know at the, we're gonna be after them, and if they can't do it, we have to find a way to get this done for our citizens. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm excited for the next four years, Rob. So you're on the uh, I've, I've talked to different councilors. Some are on the you know want to wait, make sure we have the extra government funding in place, and other ones are saying let's just go ahead and start working on it ourselves. So you're on the side of pushing ahead with our own money and, and working towards it that way uh, on the multiplex file you mean yes yes uh, no on the multiplex file i mean that's a huge file i mean we saw last week where the village of hampton that received uh uh money from the two levels two other levels of government for their uh for their ass and it was 15 15.3 million total our ass is quite a bit higher than that you know uh no i you know i want to make sure we're partners with the provincial federal government on the multiplex file there's no doubt we have to be I mean, okay. our city is, is, is in great financial position, but, you know, we can't risk going out on our own on one big project to, uh, you know, maybe not be able to deliver somewhere else in the city. Uh, we have, a, we have a, you know, a good sized city and uh, lots of roads. There's lots of people with concerns on roads. There's concerns with, you know, bike lanes, bike trails, uh, you know, so it's, it, we're not just a one, one, one hit pony here either, but. Oh, the, the two levels of government have to step up. I mean, it's proven in the province now. They've stepped up to other communities. So they're going to have to step up here and, uh, you know, give us an answer, yes or no, and tell us, you know, tell us where we stand. The city of Miramichi, where our citizens stand with them. That's what we need. So my understanding was they, they had said that uh, they wanted to come back with a smaller chunk, like to yeah. present it in a smaller way. Is that what you guys are doing now? Well, that's what that's what was uh, said be, before. I mean, I think about a year ago, I think the provincial yeah. government said to re re look at what what was sent in. Uh, so there is a, there is a revision that will be uh, that will be coming out. Um, you know, we have to obviously we're going to have to agree around the table what we want to see there. Uh, we do have some older facilities that we have to, we're going to have to get replaced. So uh, you know, but you can look at other things that have happened in the city. I mean, you, you look at the Years ago, they uh, had the curling club. Well, they downsized the curling club to uh, to meet the the monetary uh, of the time. So, I mean, you know, was it the right choice at the time? I'm not sure. I mean, uh, the people in place at the time make the decisions and make the best decisions at the time with the facts that are in front of them. Sure. So, I think with the multiplex, you know what? I'm looking for the younger generation. I'm looking for families to bring their to, uh, to bring their kids in here to play sports on the weekend, to stay at our hotels, to eat at our restaurants 
to walk at our at our Ritchie Wharf or our or Waterford Green. I mean, to see what we have, to see what we have to offer, and that's what recreation is all about: is to, is the economic development, the economic spinoff from that. And uh, well, I'm getting a lot of uh, businesses and stuff saying that they're really having a hard time getting employer employ people to work for them. Like it's just, uh, I don't know, we don't have enough people, or not enough people are going back to work, or what's going on exactly. So. What, what what do you think about that situation or what, what are we doing? Uh, I mean, I, I live it here in my, at, at our business here. I mean, uh, you know, we have uh, two sister uh, uh, automobile dealerships and, uh, you know, it is hard to get people. And, uh, but we're not, you know, it's not Miramichi. It's everywhere across the country. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, don't matter where you go, you're, you're talking the same thing. It's hard to get people uh, for whatever reason. I don't, I, you know, I'm not sure what it is, but it's, uh, you know, we have to grow, we have to grow our, our, our population in Miramichi. There's no doubt about that. I mean, without growing our population, we, we will never, you know, we'll never get bigger. And without getting bigger, we can't become more, more uh, profitable, more, uh, you know, looking out people in Canada, say, hey, I want to move to Miramichi. They have this, they have that. Without having the people, we can't afford it. So, you know, it, it's, it's a tough thing, Rob. Uh, employment is a tough thing right now. And then when we, so we start bringing the people in, which is good, uh, the housing and stuff. So you guys are sort of, you're responsible for okaying, you know, when we put up new complexes and buildings and things like that. So are we getting a lot of that? Is there a lot of activity on getting new development? Seems like it's all over the city. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Rob, man, it's, it's unreal. Like what, what we're getting brought to is at the city right now for new developments. And uh, you know, the planning commission presented to us here about uh, three weeks ago and uh, you know, what they have set out already for uh, permits for this year is, you know, it, it's the city's growing. And I mean, it, and there's a couple of new developments coming over the next couple of weeks that will be announced. I think one might have been announced last week. Uh, beautiful developments. And I mean, we have to be open to that, but also we have to make sure we have the right infrastructure in place to support, uh, you know, uh, to support this. And that goes back to King George Highway. And I've been hitting King George Highway while I've, well, I've been on council over the last few months. I mean, we have, that's a designated highway. It's a provincial responsibility. And you know what, we need some, we need some help to make sure we have the traffic through that. And I mean, we're always going to hit on King George Highway, but you know, the Northern Bypass has been something talked about in the city for years. And uh, it's been cut out, I think twice. And you know what, we, there's a lot of, we're growing. So by growing, we, we need infrastructure and we're ready to get to the table as city council, but we need the other levels come and step up and get the table with us. And I think with the right, you know, with the right people in place, we will make that happen over the next few years. That's good. Well, with the Northern Bypass, I seem to get two different stories. I get one saying, well, the bridge is being developed, worked on. We need the Northern Bypass. And then others are saying that, but well, once the bridge is done, we don't have the traffic for it. But if we're growing as a city, aren't we going to have the traffic for it? I'm not sure. Yeah, Seems like I mean, a mixed message in this whole deal. Yeah, I'm not sure about the mixed message. I mean, if you're going to build a northern bypass, you're not going to build it just for a, a bridge being closed. I mean, you're going to build it for the future. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, tens of millions of dollar infrastructure spending. And I mean, hey, the the business community is asking for the northern bypass. We're being asked to council for the northern bypass. Citizens that live along King George Highway are asking for the northern bypass. So uh, it's not a, a, you know, a short term thing. You know, we want the northern bypass built for the future. Uh, not for just today. And I mean, it's, uh, it, every city has a bypass. And I mean, if you have the right product, uh, the right signs, the right turnoffs, your business will still prosper. I mean, we lived it up here at, at this end of uh, King George Highway. We do have a bypass now. And uh, you know what? Traffic is down a little bit, maybe through the Curtis Road area, but people still travel. And if you have the right product, I mean, we'll just take, I don't know, take Parks' Dairy Bear. Who doesn't know about Parks' Dairy Bar? Who doesn't want a burger from Parks'? You know, who doesn't want an ice cream from Parks'? They're still going to go there. So uh, I'm a big believer in that, Rob. And uh, you know what? I think uh, uh, I think the majority of people are. Yeah, it seems to be. There's a, a big thing for growing the uh, the city, and we need the, the infrastructure in place. So buildings, infrastructure, and as far as more people coming in, We've had a lot lately. So are, yeah. is there more on the agenda? You know, I think there is. I mean, we're, we're hearing that. I mean, we're, you know, and now, you know, I think over the last, uh, we've all lived through COVID and people are tired mm -hmm. of talking about COVID, obviously. I mean, we want to get on here and, and get open again. And uh, just this week, I mean, our borders did open. Uh, you know, people are going to say that's good. People are going to say that's bad. 
I'm not sure. I'm, you know, here we are in Miramichi, but we do need to be uh, open and uh, have, uh, you know, our arms are open to invite people to Miramichi, to start businesses in Miramichi, to go to work at Miramichi. I wondered and, if, you know, if things like uh, people come, like I, I was talking to a business they just bought up in Blackville, the Dungarvan, the old Dungarvan Speedway there and oh, stuff. Yes. Yeah. And they uh, they came from Ontario, so they sold their businesses and things and, and make a lot of money, and, and they're coming yeah. here. Are we doing something to attract people coming from Ontario to a better idea of living? Is there something you know that the council does in any kind of way to, to say, look what we have here and, and try and draw this in, or is that more of a provincial idea? Oh, no, it's, it's definitely a provincial thing, it's a, it's, and it's a municipal thing, and uh, it's word of mouth. I mean, uh, people that have come here, I mean, I've talked to people that bought a bed and breakfast here just, you know, in King George Time, and moved here a year ago from Ontario, and... Uh, I know, you know, they, they came to Mary Machine bought a bread and breakfast. I mean, who would have thought of that 10 years ago, right? They came here, they invested. And it's the same as people who bought the Dungarvan uh, power track, like you say. I mean, uh, they left Ontario for what reason? Well, obviously, COVID started, you know, Ontario, them areas get hit harder. New Brunswick, we were very fortunate, very lucky what happened here. I mean, we never, we had a few weeks there last spring that, you know, people were kind of not sure what to do. We'll be open back in May, and we've been pretty good ever since. And, um, uh, we live in a, uh, Miramichi is a, you know, the fourth biggest city in, in, in New Brunswick, but we're, we're a rural area. I mean, we, we're spread out. We're not right on top of each other. Uh, I mean, we have the nicest river probably in North America. And I mean, we have a lot of stuff here to offer and the cost of living here, house prices have gone up, but obviously that's due to market, that's due to market conditions. And uh, that's great to see. I mean, people are moving here. They're not that high because people are moving here from Ontario and buying them. I mean, and uh, people here are selling homes and moving to new homes. And uh, so, you know what, well, we're in a pretty good situation right now. Uh, the biggest thing is to be positive and, uh, you know, promote Miramichi, no matter where we are as a, as a council or as, you know, as a, as a citizen. Promote where you live and be proud of it. I think oh, yeah. Well, I, I think in all the years I've lived in Miramichi, it seems to be at its best. It's been, in, I mean, we've had lots of ups and downs, but uh, this seems to be a peak compared in my whole lifetime here that it's been... Uh, for, for us, financially, uh, our city seems to be doing great. Oh, it's a, you know, when I first got in council back in 2008, financially, we were, we were, uh, it was tight. Our mills were closing, uh, you know, a year and a half later, uh, ATCON closed. Uh, it was tough. And uh, you know what, we've come a long ways. Kudos to all the councilor, council people in between and, uh, and people that work at the city. I mean, uh, we, it's really improved and it's, uh, to get back there this year, it was a, it was kind of a joy to see where, where we're sitting as a city and uh, know that we can do some stuff and we work collaboratively with everybody around the table to make it better. And I, and there's a big fuss for this, uh, the bike trails and walking trails by the water. Right? It seems like everybody wants it. I haven't heard anybody say, no, that's something we wouldn't want. So <laughs> are we, no, we yeah. yeah, you're right. Last night, I mean, uh, just so happened last night, we had our presentation from the, the study they did for the active transportation study for the city of Mirashi that they engaged, I think about two years ago and a uh, lady presented to us. It was about an hour and 20 minutes, I think, and touched on all that, the bike trails, the waterways, uh, you know, uh, skidooing, uh, four wheelers, uh, uh, paddle boating, everything, kayaking. It was, it was really in depth. And uh, so that report is, is, is in place. Now we're waiting after probably a couple more months, we'll get the final report. But council is is ready to act on this, and uh, we uh, we're excited about a couple of uh, uh, pieces of property that we're looking at as a city to engage this process. And uh, but uh, all council is very active in this, and I, I know that will come to uh, you know during this year's budget, we'll be on board to make sure some of this happens. Rob, awesome, awesome, yeah. And uh, and they recently did, pulled off this dog park deal. <laughs> Yeah, that just came out of the blue. I don't know where that. All of a sudden, I was like, "Oh, we have a dog park. What's that about? Yeah, how how did that come to order?" Well, I'm, I'm I'm not a dog owner, but I guess it's you know it's been it's it's been in place for the last two or three years around council, and uh, you know what they've uh, presented to us uh, about a month ago. Uh, all the costing, everything's done. It's down the old King George Highway at the old uh, softball field right in the corner. Um, so it's a, it's a good place. The ball field's been decommissioned now for a couple of years. Uh, fencing is already in place. It's the uh, parking's there. And you know what? Every other city has one or two dog parks. I was in Woodstock, uh, 
I'll come out to go for basketball. And I mean, they have a dog park right beside their, uh, you know, beside their rink and everything up there. And you, you just kind of stop to look, say, Hey, what is this? What goes on? And people are talking, they're mingling, dogs are running around. I mean, Hey, it's, you know what, it's a safety thing too, right? Like that's where they're, wa- that's where they're running. That's where they're walking. So it, it's, it's a good thing, Rob. So. Yeah. 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 yeah that's for sure. I enjoy it. Uh, yeah. And everybody I know who has dogs thinks it's a great idea. So what can you do? Yeah, no, that's right. We're hearing good things about it. So I think it's great. Yeah. So is there any uh, things you've put onto the plate that you're saying that you'd like to see in the city maybe and get the counselors thinking about specific things just to your ideas? No, not much yet. I mean, we've been, uh, us new guys, I guess, and girls have been really taking a lot of stuff in, uh, trying to see where, what was already set in place. I think, you know, a lot of it was working. So, you know, we don't want to uh, go in there and try to upset the apple cart or change path pathways. I mean, uh, I think we, we're on the right path. we got to keep continuing to, to do the right things. Uh, we, you know, I'm being in the sports and I'm, I'm going to be pushing for, you know, outdoor uh, activities. And, uh, you know, if it's a basketball court, I don't know. I'm just, you know, you're sure. throwing ideas. Cause I think through COVID we found out that, you know, we need to be outside. We need to be doing, doing stuff and we want our kids outside. So I'm big on recreation and I'm going to be supporting that fully, uh, right through the city, whatever we can do. And, um, and I think, oh, I think that's, that's a where, great idea. Yeah. That's where I'll, that's where I'll be, uh, or a lot of work. Yeah. Sponsor some things. Yeah, no, yeah, that, definitely. I'm definitely for that kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, we need more. <laughs> we do. I agree. And I think you will I remember see they had a, a tennis court and, uh, over by the, uh, the pool over there in the Chatham side. And, mm-hmm. uh, when we, when I lived over in that area, we used to go down to that tennis court and it was great. Kids would go down there and play tennis all day. And it was, uh, yep. yeah, stuff like that. Anything gets them out of the house is, is my goal yeah. away from those Nintendo games or whatever yeah. it is. You're right. And, and like in back, I think it was 2009, we updated all of our tennis courts in, in the city. And, you know, that we got a pretty good, uh, we got two good facilities now, one beside Mary's Valley, one, one just over by the Golden Hawk, like you mentioned. Um, we did have one down by where Max Aiken was built, but obviously that had to be uh, decommissioned because a new school is going there, which is, you know, a benefit for the whole community. So we do have two facilities for tennis. And I mean, we need more of that. And go back to previous comments to, to bring in new doctors or uh, professionals. They, they're the guys maybe that want to see a tennis court or girls that want to see a tennis court or a squash court or, you know, a lighted, a lighted tennis court or a lighted basketball court outside. I don't know, but, uh, you know, we have to provide the right recreation facilities to, to, to invite people in here because our neighboring cities have that. And you know what they're saying? Hey, you know, they look at maybe look at their dad. Hey dad, I can do this here. And he's saying, well, I can get a job maybe as a doctor anywhere. I don't have to come to Mary Machine. So we got to make sure we have it there for these, for everybody that's coming in, Rob. And that's, that's a big goal. Of mine. That's awesome. And do we have any plans for the summer because of the COVID restrictions coming down for big events or anything or. No, uh, yeah. nothing, nothing really, you know, I mean, the rock and roll weekend just went off this yep. past weekend. They had huge, that was crowds. Awesome. I was done the fireworks and stuff there Friday night. I mean, uh, the crowds are around Sunday, I guess they had a huge crowd at the car show. So, you know, great for them. I think you're going to see uh, more events happen and, uh, there's a ball tournaments going on almost every weekend. Uh, Chatham awesome. heads host the provincials here in September. So, I mean, there's things happening and uh, we had to be there to support it. Uh, Historic Water Street is uh, came up with a fabulous idea for the buskers. It's coming here the first week in September. Um, yeah, that's you know, going to be something. Yeah, we jumped on that a couple of weeks ago. There was some, con- you know, con- quite a bit of conversation about it, but we're dealing with, you know, we're dealing with taxpayers' money. So we have to make sure what we're doing with the money, but as an idea, it's fabulous. And I think you'll see more ideas come out over the next uh, few months. That's awesome. Well, I like the fact that you guys are seem to be a real accountable, sort of transparent out there council that's uh, letting people know what's going on and taking views and stuff. So I want to thank you for uh, coming in and talking with us, Jason, and yep. just letting people know what's going on. No, I appreciate the, the invite, Rob, for sure. Oh, anytime. Well, thanks again. <laughs> you have a great day. You too, man. <laughs> don't thank work you. too hard. Uh, don't worry. Thank <laughs> you. Bye-bye.